Welcome to MacroStop Videos. Here I will be talking about what we can do with video on our DSLRs and also take a look at an unusual and easy to use follow focus. When video crept into DSLRs some years ago now, I certainly didn't pay too much attention to it. I had been into video for many years, at least long enough to sell off my HD camera before it was too devalued and to retire my DV cameras to a back room in our studio. There was a lot I didn't know about video and the learning curve was expensive. One thing I didn't know, at least in the beginning, is that the large cinema lenses are almost all manual focus. Hollywood doesn't do autofocus for the most part. Instead, they have a dedicated person, a, a focus puller, to focus the camera while the operator shoots. The focus puller stands on one side of the camera and hits very exact and pre-calculated marks of focus, one after the other. I didn't totally get the need for an additional operator, and so I purchased an early DSLR focus puller from a startup company specializing in DSLR video. And I had to wait a very long time while they brought it to market and it was super expensive, only to find out what I mentioned above, that these devices really are built for a dedicated operator. I have many things, but a dedicated focus puller I don't have on hand. And the focus pulling devices face sideways, 90 degrees from the operator. Certainly I did my best, but I finally kind of gave up and sold the device for peanuts, of course. Early video was, for me, a huge money sink, with few rewards other than to walk tightrope on the bleeding edge of technology, which is, for me at least, not all that much fun. Well, times change, and there are now focus-pulling devices that actually are made so that the operator can shoot video and pull focus at the same time, finally, and no, no dedicated help is required. It's not my aim to make a full-length movie, so what would I do with such a device? That's a good question. I guess the answer is something like this. Perhaps I would like to see my photos move. Just as we gaze on a lovely stacked photo for a few seconds, I can imagine that in the future I might like to gaze at a few seconds of video as well. Anyway, recently Twitter launched Vine, which allows us to tweet six seconds of video across the globe. What's that all about? For me, it's about these still photos coming to life and moving. Do I want to do something like that? You know, I think I do. I think I'd like to, to make little tiny moving pictures that are short but beautiful. But there are some hurdles to cross, and I hope to document a few of them in these little tutorials. So let's start with pulling focus. Here is a little device called Arch Rig. It's made for DSL cameras that, that have a video built into them. And the Arch Rig allows me to set focus stops using my DSLRs and virtually any of my Nikon lenses. And it's pretty simple. I just strap a geared ring on one of my favorite lenses and away I go. Using this device, I can set two hard stops on this aluminum ring stops that when I focus my lens using this little strap-on device, I can rotate from one point of focus to another really effortlessly. Or I can also mark the aluminum ring with a dry erase marker and make several stops in between the hard stops. And the thing actually works. It's not too expensive, $179 on Amazon. And I mounted it on a tripod with Arca-style quick-release clamps and plate. So it goes on and off in seconds. It's kind of, it's lightweight, not bulky, and it's actually easy to use. It's way too early in the game for me to have much to show because aside from pulling focus, I also need to get what Hollywood calls a slider, a device that lets me do seamless side, sideways pans without jitters, as well as zooming in and out of a scene smoothly. I have one on order. When it arrives, I plan to pan and zoom, plus set focus marks, 
in order to produce a choreographed suite of camera movements that hopefully reveal my subject in a new and interesting way. Pain in the butt? Sure, but then what is focus stacking? This dream is still in its early stages, but as mentioned earlier, it includes revealing a worthy subject in motion, just as focus stacking reveals increased apparent sharpness and detail. Focus stacking mimics the eye's ability to look anywhere, and we find that every point we look at is always in focus, although everything around it is foggy. We don't notice all the bokeh. We actually live in a world that is mostly blurred bokeh rather than everything being in focus. With these motion stills, which is what I call them, we won't see everything in a 3D still, but instead we will move in and out and around the subject, adding up details into an experience, a moving montage of images. Is this the bleeding edge I'm walking on again? It could be, but it's okay. You can color me crazy if you wish. <laughs>